DNA. You guys. What did we find? Oh, the DNA would be on the red solo cups because it was John's. This is parental figure and super low vibe. There's snake and a backstabber. Disposing of evidence. Oh, here's the devil. Yeah. Per pattern repetition Higgins. I was watching um He's a linguist, which by the way is a was one of my hardest classes. I hated linguist ling linguistics. He makes it look really easy, but a um he was saying that in Higgins' testimony, and I will link him below because I can't remember what it was. It's like truth revealed, maybe. He was saying that Higgins, from his speech patterns on the stand, hooked up with. I believe Chris Curran and his wife might have been there at one point. I think maybe the wife left, but he stayed. I believe maybe Mr. Curran, I was never met him before. I think they introduced him as Mr. Curran's brother. Yes. All right. And in addition to Mr. O'Keefe, who, if anyone else was at the house, I believe Chris Curran and his wife might have been there at one point. I think maybe the wife left, but he stayed. I believe maybe Mr. Curran, I was never met him before. I think they introduced him as Mr. Curran's brother, and then John's nephew, and I don't know if his niece was there, she might have been in the other room. And then Higgins starts crying. Right, what do we learn from this? Okay, so we have Mr. Curran and his wife might have been there at one point. So at one point is missing time. Let's take the first two sentences together here. I believe Chris Curran and his wife might have been there at one point. I think maybe the wife left, but he stayed. So we have Chris Curran, Chris Curran gets proper introdu introduction, might have been there. So we have an awful lot of reduction of commitment here. And then at one point is missing time. Then the wife gets downgraded from being his wife to the wife. So that's interesting. And then we have left. So the wife, whatever her name is, we have an indicator of conflict because she left. And then at one point tells us that there was an actual conflict. So a disagreement or something like that, that upset her. And that's why she left. And she was downgraded from being his wife to being the wife. So either she had a problem with Higgins or there was some argument that disassociated her from Chris Curran. So for some reason, Higgins is willing to call her Chris Curran's wife when he first got there. But when she left, she's no longer his wife. So either Chris Curran and his wife had a blowout or, or Higgins knows the wife because there might be history between Brian Higgins and Chris Curran's wife. Because if he is not willing to let her keep the title of Chris Curran's wife. It was a C word, a, a couple. He called it her C words wife and then the wife in the linguist said they have a history together. And then as it unfolds and he keeps testifying and he's still analyzing it, he finds Carrie, Carrie is the lady. It's not Carrie, the Carrie from the morning of. I thought that that was always Carrie from that morning. It's this Carrie C lady. A lot of sensitivity around him, which indicates to me that Brian Higgins and the wife may have been tiptoeing around him. Also, the wife left right away, left as an indicator of conflict. I'm wondering if Brian Higgins had a fling with the wife. And once Brian Higgins showed up, then because of either a fling or a conflict with her, she left. And then as soon as he starts... Who has a husband named John, who Higgins hooked up with. Because Karen says, oh, I got your... When Higgins is reading his text messages, I know there's lots of comments that say it was a Facebook messenger. No. Well, according to testimony and when they brought it in, it's all text. So that I stand by that video I made, which I'm glad because if it was Facebook Messenger, they would have said it at least once. They didn't mention it ever. They always only mention the text. So in there, Karen, he like stalks Karen because he's stage five. With hey Brian, it's weed whacker. As far as that communication is concerned, it's the weed whacker. What if any meaning of that have to you? So ultimately, it was based off of an interaction with the defendant, kind of a nickname that she adopted. And how did that nickname sort of come to be, or what if anything transpires between the two of you that led to that? So you see here that Brian Higgins doesn't overexplain this. If he doesn't want to overexplain something, he will literally just cut himself off and allow the next question to come. He says, "So I was leaving. I believe my residence one day in Canton, traveling down Pleasant Street. I saw the defendant along the side of the house on the Pleasant Street side using a using a weed whacker." And I gave kind of a beep of the horn and the defendant gave me the finger. So I realized 
that she clearly must not have recognized me because possibly because of what I was driving. I was in my work vehicle. So I spun the vehicle around and as I pulled up to roll down my window, she said something to the effect, get the F away from me. My husband's a Boston cop. And then I rolled down the window more and she clearly recognized me who I was in that vehicle. All right. So he starts with, so, which is an explanatory statement. So we know right off the bat, this whole statement is going to be problematic. We also can see that this is one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten lines. So there's too much information in here, which means that this is deceptive. On its face, the whole, whatever you're getting in here is not the message that he wants you to know. Then he starts with the verb leaving. Whenever a person starts a paragraph and the first verb in the paragraph is leaving, that means the entire paragraph is deceptive. Why is that? Because when you leave somewhere, you're either late to go somewhere or there's conflict. And here, he's not late to go anywhere unless he's late to drive by Karen Reed. So he he's leaving from some conflict and he's omitting that conflict. And the fact that he's not telling you why he was leaving is problematic. It could mean that he actually knew that she was going to be working outside in the yard and he specifically left his house just to go drive to see her. Just that that was his intention was actually to go drive by Honk his horn and, and meet her. We can't take away anything from this except that there's something about this that is not what he wants to specifically let you know about. So I believe my resident one day in Canton traveling down Pleasant Street I saw the defendant along the side of the house on the Pleasant Street side. So there's way too much information in here. Like on the Pleasant Street side, who cares? So using a using a weed whacker and I gave kind of a beep of the horn and the defendant gave me the finger. So I realized that she clearly must not recognize me because possibly because so we have a repetition of an explanatory statement of what I was driving. So he definitely had some sort of knowledge. Maybe they had a conversation that she'd be working outside that day from maybe when they talked at a bar previously at the waterfall or the hillside or something. And she mentioned that she'd be working outside. It's possible that he had been going out and driving by her house once every half an hour all day waiting until she was outside of her house so that he could actually pretend like he's making like this little meet cute sort of thing. But he clearly had the intent of meeting her because he doesn't say that he was going anywhere else. So the only place he says he was going was here. And so this is basically, this is very intentional on Brian Higgins's part. So the only thing that I can really glean from this is that they met before this. And this explanation of how they met here is fabricated. And my best educated guess here, as far as my deductive logic section, is that he did this purposefully. He actually set this up to meet her and probably had been driving by her house numerous times that day until he saw her outside. And drives by the house, allegedly, this is all like from his linguistics, until Karen's outside and he has like a weed whacker. She's holding like a weed whacker and she flicks him off. And then he rolls down his window because he was in his government vehicle. And somehow they start flirting. In those texts, he says, how did you get my number? And she said, Carrie gave it to me. Well, Carrie is the wife of this John guy. That all came out through this uh, linguist, the linguistics.